What is leadership? We've talked about key differentiators of leadership. We've talked about impactful leadership and we've talked about keys to leadership success. But what exactly is leadership? Today, we're talking about the essence of leadership. My name is Jennifer Mitchell Early. I help individuals and teams achieve organizational and personal success. And this is Leadership Matters. What is leadership? Why is it important? And how can I become an influential leader? Let's start with what leadership is not. Leadership has nothing to do with seniority or one's position in the hierarchy of a company. If we were honest, I think we'd all admit to having an experience or two when we work with someone with a title who was perhaps leader challenged. They simply did not convey, demonstrate, or employ strong leadership skills, characteristics, or tendencies. For this reason, leadership doesn't automatically happen when you reach a certain pay grade. Hopefully, you cultivate it by a certain level in your career, but there are no guarantees. Leadership has nothing to do with titles. You can be a leader in your church, in your family, in your social organizations, and in your neighborhood, all without having a title. Leadership has nothing to do with personal attributes. You can be outgoing, charismatic, domineering, or assertive, and still not be a leader. Extroverted individuals don't automatically lead. Leadership is the action of leading a group or people or an organization. The capacity to translate vision into reality. The art of motivating a group of people to act towards achieving a common goal. Leadership stems from social influence, not authority or power. Leadership requires others, which doesn't always refer to being direct reports. Leadership allows varying styles and paths to effective leadership. Leadership entails having a goal with an intended outcome. Now that we know what leadership isn't, we can talk about what leadership is. The definition of, of a true leader or leadership is to influence, inspire, and help others become their best selves by building their skills and achieving goals along the way. Leadership is a set of skills and even more importantly, a mindset that when one person harnesses their powers to lead, it strengthens the leadership opportunities of others rather than diminishing them. That's because the ultimate definition of leadership is empowering others to become effective leaders as well. That's a great business definition of leadership provided by Tony Robbins. But at its core, what qualifies individuals to be leaders is their capacity to influence others to change their behavior in order to achieve important results. So what does it take to be an influencer to be able to create an impressive and lasting change in human behavior? Focus and measure. You have to be crystal clear about the result that you're trying to achieve, as well as being enthusiastic and committed about measuring it. Finding vital behaviors. Focus on high level behaviors that drive results. These are the two or three vital actions that produce the greatest amount of change. Engage all of the six sources of influence. Influencers stand out because they overdetermine change, where most of us apply a favorite influence tool or two to our difficult challenges. Influencers identify all of the varied forces that are shaping the behavior that they want to change and then get them to work for them rather than against them. Utilizing all six sources of influences increases their odds of success by tenfold. Engaging all six sources of influence is critical to getting people to carry out the behaviors that you've identified. Once you've identified what you want, getting people to adopt those behaviors is no small feat. Let's take a look at the six sources of influence. Personal motivation, help them do what they hate. Personal motivation, as you watch people not doing the right thing while repeatedly doing the wrong thing, ask, do they enjoy it? Personal ability, help them do what they can't. When trying to understand why others don't do what they should do, ask, 
Can they do it? So in a nutshell, personal motivation and personal ability asks, am I motivated? Is it worth it? Can I do it? Social motivation, provide encouragement. Examine the social side of influence by asking, do others encourage them to enact the wrong behavior? Social ability, provide assistance. As it relates to social ability as, do others enable them? Social motivation and social ability taps into the power of social influence, ensuring that the right people provide encouragement, coaching, and accountability during crucial moments. Building social capital is paramount to our success in providing individuals with the assistance that they need to adopt daunting new changes. Consider what help, authority, consent, or cooperation individuals may need to make changes inevitable. Structural motivation, change their economy. When assessing structural motivation, ask, do rewards and sanctions encourage them? Structural ability, change their space. Things can either enable or disable performance. Ask, does their environment enable them? Structural motivation and structural ability can be tricky. When you look at the extrinsic motivators that you're using to encourage or discourage behavior, take care to adhere to a few helpful principles. First, rely on personal and social motivators as your first line of attack. Let the value of the behavior itself along with social motivators carry the bulk of the motivational load. When choosing rewards, don't be afraid to draw on small, heartfelt tokens of appreciation. Remember, less is more and to reward behaviors and not outcomes. Finally, when becoming an influencer, you have to consider more than the people. You have to also include their space. Non-human forces such as buildings, space, sound, and sight should all be considered with your in, within your influence strategy. For example, if you're cultivating an environment where you want individuals to feel free to communicate openly, you have to also consider the environment, the space, office, furniture, lighting, accessories, the aesthetics. Is the space closed off, formal and stuffy, or is it open and inviting and relaxed? I hope that you enjoyed this short, high level overview of what is leadership. I've got some great news. I'm writing and developing more training courses that you can register for that expound on these topics and expand your knowledge. If you haven't already done so, please make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any important updates.